Pena. Yeah. Gwen. Hi, guys. Uh, so it was. Or Cluj? No, no, I'm from Bucharest. 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 I know we are a Rus from Cluj. Uh, he was born in Cluj, but he played in Bucharest. He was uh, okay. my coach okay. as well. I remember he was from Cluj. I met him like 10 yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But do, do you do you coach in US or, or in Romania right now? No, now I'm in Kuwait. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're so, you know, a world, a world, a global. We're a global coaching uh, group. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm so I discovered, I discovered now. Mark here that it's Romanian as well. Yeah, yeah. But you guys both live in live in Romania right now? No, I I was born in the United States. Uh, my parents are from Romania, and I speak Romanian fluent. My wife is from Romania. I That's talk. You. Romanian coaches all the time. So well, my uh, my manager when I went to Italy, and he's still one of my all-time best friends, is uh, was Tufan Bogdan. <laughs> uh, you know, he was uh, manager at Cavity, and then he was you know playing with the national team at playing with Cavity, and then my son when he was at Cremona, his manager, you know, was also Romanian. <laughs> so uh, we have a very close uh, relationship with that. I mean, I have amazing friends. I've been to Noradea, Bucharest, you know. Uh, I've been to a lot of different places there. I got mostly just good memories, let's put it that way. Yeah. Good to hear that. Uh, Doing a little this morning. Used to hear coffee, bad right? things about Romania. Early, I drank too much coffee, so going for the little bit of a little tea, a little Chinese tea, something I learned from the Chinese. Oh. Uh, Fabio. Yeah, we got about uh, three minutes, and then we get started. Uh, did you guys receive your templates on a, on a, by email? Oh, yep. Okay, I sent templates to all of you guys by email, and uh, so that way we can discuss it, we can talk about it. Um, so hopefully everything wow. is good. I also started to put all those things you asked me on the application six eight. It is free. Uh, just you can look in there, and then there is all the all the stuff to put. All the center drills are starting to get in. All the defensive drills, and then tomorrow I am putting Tony to a pretty massive hour and a half workout on drivers shooting quick lightning positioning shooting by uh, two, three, four. And we're going to make another 32 videos. And then that should be on online in a couple of weeks also. Okay. But that's not on the site, but on the application, Rico. Yeah, it's on the application, but also some of them will be on the site also. Okay. Okay. But the application, then, uh, uh, I, we will discuss it today. I wrote 50 swimming conditioning workouts for you guys. And I've also wrote 30 goalie workouts for you guys. So I'll also give you that for free. And uh, you guys can look at it. And then you, when you, we, because when we write the workout, it's important to have the tools in front of us. So I'm going to give you guys as many tools as possible. You know, and then that way, whatever else you guys need, that's what I'm here for. You know, I'm here to help you guys. You know, Coach Acevedo, where, uh, what website are we going to look at for the drills that are not on the app on the six eight? Well, you're going to look at it both. You know, uh, the stuff there's the six eight app, and then some of the stuff I'm also going to put on Acevedo uh, water polo because the Acevedo water polo is going to be a lot of my coaching stuff. Okay, so take a look at both and see which one is going in. Remember, as I said. I'm just learning in this technological crap. I just do the work. And then I, I give them to these people and they put it in and they say, oh, it's on the site. And I'm like, what site? What are we talking about? <laughs> you know, so I'm still a little bit lost on that. But it is, it is going to be, I know as of today, I think it's already in a couple of them. They're putting in like two, three, four, five at a time. And, uh, and, uh, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more as soon as we get, uh, let's see, we've got about another minute and then we should be fine. Can you please uh, write the app again? Because I tried to find it on Tuesday and I don't. 
Okay. Is the is this the six six eight sport? There's no break on it. You just like six eight sport. Ah. Uh. App, and then you go in, or you can yeah. also go into the Azevedo waterfall, and it has a click for the six eight sport. I mean, the whole the whole app itself is only a dollar ninety nine. You know, like I said, we that was a discussion years ago when we started that we want to keep it as cheap as possible. Uh, and I tell you, for a dollar ninety nine, I don't think there's any app in the world that's going to give you as much stuff as we give you. And uh, besides that, you're going to get all the support that you need too, because when you need something. I mean, that's what we're here for. You know, we're talking about a lot of new things that we're coming up with, and uh, we want to make sure it's available to all of you guys for sure. Okay. Well, let's get started. Hey, Mike, good to see you. Uh, hey, Rick. Uh, so <laughs> what, what we want to do today, you know, that we've been watching videos and talking about stuff like this. Today, let's talk about planning a workout and what it is to actually train. Uh, because, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, it took me. I mean, I, I've, I've coached at that, let's say, international level or whatever level for, you know, my first coaching job international was in 1983. So, you know, you can tell you how long ago <laughs> that was. And, uh, and so, you know, that was with a junior team in uh, Turkey in the 84 World Championships so for juniors. And so, it, but it took me probably another 10 years before I even understood what it is to write a workout. You know, like most coaches, we get into the pool, we have an idea what we want to do. And then we'd do it, you know. And, of course, you know, we, we, if we had great, uh, let's say, coaches as players, uh, if we were around uh, uh, some really good coaches and really intelligent coaches, that helps, you know, because you'll come in and you feel very comfortable in the water. If you're a player, you do things that you did. But I got to tell you guys, you know, it, it's not always successful, okay. Coaching takes a lot of planning. All right. Takes a lot of planning. And I, and I got to tell you that, you know, after about 10, 12 years of just kind of, you know, shooting off the hip, as we say, you know, coming in. Yeah, sure. I always took my pen, you know, I took my pen, I took my pad and I always came in with, you know, written what I was going to do. You know, uh, I try to do that every time. Once in a while you forgot and then you just kind of shoot from the hip again. Uh, but... <laughs> After about 10 or 12 years, I never showed up to a practice unless I had planned. And I started planning by the week, okay? That's what I started planning for. And then after that, I started planning for 21 days. And we will talk about that in a second. 21 days is a proven fact, okay? And if you actually go into the internet and you look at 21 days in a lot of different types of techniques of training and yoga and, and actually physical training, you'll find out that that's how long it takes for you to actually assimilate something physically and to become kind of like a natural thing. That's one of the reasons why they say that, excuse me, that uh, diets don't work. Because before you get to 21 days, somebody already quits and ah, that doesn't work. I didn't lose any weight. But they don't understand that if you stay 21 days to something, then your body basically gets used to it. Your mind gets used to it. So everything I started writing, you know, back in the mid 80s, mid 90s and late 90s, I started working when everything is based on 21 days. So, uh, you know, so let's, let's, let's start with that. So let's take a look at the whole year and we have to decide each one of you might have a little bit of a different approach. Because you have 365 days out of the year, you have, uh, you know, basically 52 weeks. But let's look at it that way. If you took every Sunday out of every week during the whole year, okay, that's about seven weeks, okay? We'll figure out. You're taking four Sundays a month, you know, you don't, it's not too hard to figure that out. You got about seven weeks of actually Sundays that they are resting. That's a way to look at it. Because a lot of times people say, well, when am I going to give you rest? You know, they basically have about a 15% rest every week. I mean, they got a Sunday. Okay, nobody should work out seven days out of the week. Okay, uh, a lot of you will give Saturday and Sunday. Don't recommend that. If you cannot get into a pool on Saturday, you can always give them a mental workout, a homework workout with your head. You know, a lot of those things, to me, they're just as good as workout as anything. I mean, Tony this morning woke me up. Uh, you know, I was just having a, my, 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 my coffee. And then he came to me and he says, dad, I need you to write me four homeworks on counterattack. Done. You know, I can write those pretty quick. I can write one for you guys really quick. 
you know, but what is a homework? A homework is something you give it to an athlete. And particularly now you can do it with a computer. We put all my athletes through that. That was one of the reasons I was able to get the Chinese so quickly up there, you know, with such young players. Because what I did was they had a homework three days a week. And what does that mean? I write, I put ahead, I visualize, let's say you visualize in here, you know, I'll do something like this, right? And I, I'll do it. There you go, you know. And then I'll say, okay, if the ball is here, you know, where should this player go? And the players have to understand. So they not only have to understand the tactics, they have to visualize the tactics, right? Have them design what a 2-3 drop looks like. Have them design what is a counter attack when a boy shot from the left. You know, so when you make the athlete actually think about it as homework, it, guys, let me tell you, it will help you a lot. It really made my life a lot simpler even at the high school level, because all of a sudden the player, you know, w w w just think about it. What a wonderful situation when you're coaching and talking to people that understand the same thing you're trying to explain. Because half of the time, you know, and again, I can say that I'm speaking them in English and they understand Chinese. So that sounded like Chinese to them. You know what I mean? I mean, it's so, <laughs> you know, we're using these, these fun kind of things, but that's the truth. So if I didn't make them understand what the concept is, if I didn't make them understand exactly what we're trying to talk about, why would they understand? The player then become what? The thing that I hate. And that's color by number. When the player just does exactly what you tell him, but he has no idea why he's doing it. That, to me, is a kiss of death to a program. You know, we don't want soldiers. We want warriors. Soldiers tell them what, they're, you know, what to do. Soldiers are told what to do and do exactly what to do, even if it's wrong. Warriors, they do what's necessary to do. So what you want to do is you want to clean your team like warriors. You know, I learned that from Radko, too. He used to tell me, Rico, you know, these guys are not, he used to tell me right off the bat, they're not soldiers. They must be warriors because the warriors yeah. make up their mind. And that's what happens because a lot of times you'll say, okay, we're going to run a 2-4 drop or we're going to run a 21 pick, whatever it is that we, we run. All of a sudden, they have a great defender on the 21 pick. You cannot run a 21 pick. Maybe you have to reverse and go 12 pick. Or maybe you got to go at 23. Maybe you have to swim across and take that defender out of there. So there, you, know, you have to be able to adjust. And what happens a lot of times when we are just these little soldiers, we don't do that. Okay? So make, you know, give them homework. That's important. So let, let, let's just go right into uh, the workout, and we can keep talking. I no need to look at my ugly face. Hold on. Uh, let's just go in. The, uh, let's go into this one here. I think we'll do that first. All right. Do, 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 take this out. Can everybody see it? Yeah. Okay, good. Yep. You know, so th this is a template that I use, and um, this template was used with a national team. <laughs> Um, and if you look at the template as you have, you know, I mean, of course, you know, I always put stuff in here. It's important that when athletes are also uh, training, it is also important that the athletes understand uh, that it still is sport. Okay, don't forget that. Because if it becomes a job, if it becomes something that you, you just have to do it, you probably don't want to do it. Okay, you probably are going to sit over there going like, whatever, you know, I'm going to do this. Nobody's looking. So then it becomes kind of a boring thing. All right. So let's take a look in here. So we start, you know, you put the date. You have the total time. Always write the total time of workout. Do you have an hour and a half? Do you have three hours? Do you have two and a half? I mean, exactly. Write it down so you know what you have. When you have a workout, you need to know how many yards or meters, depending how you swim, you do that day. You know, uh, because when it comes at the end of the week, you say, okay, I swam 52,000 yards this week. All right. Or oh, I swam 32,000. I swam 12,000. Uh, I swam this much a day. There were two workouts. I swam on one or the other. That's why I have over here is AM, PM. Or did you have two workouts? You write two sheets. Or you can modify this and to make it into one sheet as double, as I did. Okay. Uh, the total workouts is also extremely important. The total yards also important <laughs> because you need the players to understand the players need to understand that when they miss a day of training, it is not missing a day of training, okay? They are missing this right here. 
They are missing, you know, 7,000. Uh, one of you guys mute, somebody is sneezing over there. Mute your microphone, please. Uh, we don't want to catch coronavirus through the microphone. And so, you know, what, what we're talking about here is that, so if he misses, let's say three days of workout, you can come right back and show him, says, no, you didn't miss three days of workout. You missed, you know, 14,000 yards. Now, how are you going to make that up? How are you going to make that 14,000 yards? They need to understand that taking good care of their bodies and not missing a day of workout is important, okay? Uh, cycle, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to get out the, 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 the share just for a second. What is cycle? Okay, cycle means all of you guys, most of the high school, most of the high school uh, teams in, in this country, uh, they will go to what's called a 4-3 cycle. That means they have three seasons, right? So you take the 12 months out of the year, you divide it into four three-month cycles because you have your season, right? That is, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, three, four, uh, four, three cycles, three, four cycles, not four, three. Three, four, four cycles because you basically have your August, September, October, November, or mid of, mid of August all the way to mid-December, that is the high school season. And then you have kind of an off season, and then that's like three months of off season, okay? And then you have your summer season. So this is what it said. Most seasons are between three months and four months. On the international level, okay? On the international level, um, it's um, on the international level. What we have is that we have a, a four three month season. Because usually they have their club collegiate kind of club league, club season. Then you have the international season that's in the summer, and they do have kind of an off season that they have. Some of them can vary in numbers, but usually I would plan for you guys collegiate, high school. It's your choice. I mean, there is no you know, a lot of people. I'm not one of those guys. Oh, there's only this way. Bull crap. Adjust to whatever is best for you. You have four three month season, or you have three four month seasons. That's all you have. I mean, if you look at it, that's the way anywhere, even at the professional level. You have your playoff season, you have the rain season, and you have the off season. So you know what? You have that, no matter how you look at it. So it's four, three, and three, fours, okay? When you have four, three-month seasons, that's the one, you know, uh, like a lot of people will do, you have 12 weeks of work, okay? So you have to divide the 12 weeks of work. Um, it's 12 weeks of work is divided into four 21 workouts that we're just writing right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to write a workout for 21 days. So you write your workout for 21 days. Okay. But what you're going to do for 21 days is the same with light variation. So maybe on Mondays, Wednesday, and Fridays, you have this swim, Tuesday and Thursday, you have this swim. Maybe the next week you can change the swim, but you are working within that 21 days, okay? Those 21 days need to be um, evaluated, obviously, at the end of every week. Maybe you wrote too hard. Maybe you didn't write hard enough. So you're going to actually do a little bit of homework at the end of the week and say, you know what? They handled the swim sets pretty well, but I think they need a little bit of warm-up, you know? And you might say, no, I think we maybe need a little bit more passing. I mean, they're still not developing that way. So you're going to write everything based on the 21 weeks, and then you're going to go to 12 one of those, 12, one, 12 weeks. And it comes down to, like you said, you've got four sessions of 21 days. Think about it, guys. It's just easier to think that way. So instead of you writing the workout for today, start working out a workout for the week, and then two and then three. And what's nice about it, I wrote most of my workouts in my off season or when I had some time off. So I had some time off. I wanted to do some workouts. I'm going to write workouts during that time because by doing that, hey, when a season starts, it's just a notebook away. And like right now, hey, it's a notebook away. That's what I do. This sits here next to me. It's not for a reason right here. This sits next to me all the time. And whenever I time off, I write a workout. So you know what? For coaches, that's kind of a fun thing. I mean, I can see a game. I can sit over there and I see a game. I see somebody running a certain defense. I'll write down the defense in here, and then I'm going to come up with a workout. I'm going to come up with a workout to beat that defense or do that defense. And you know what? Don't, don't sit over there waiting for something. So waiting for the magic time. No, 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 no. You guys are so freaking smart, man. You know, all we have to do is just take the time. 
I mean, and I mean, I, I know the majority of you guys, and I mean, I've coached against some of you guys, and I mean, we, we have a lot of talent within ourselves, but we need to, to be more professional when it comes to, you know, the design training. And, and of course, if you go to three, four, uh, three, four, you know, uh, seasons, right? If you go three during the year, you have three, four month seasons, then it's just going to go to 15 weeks. And then that just means you're going to go to like 521 series. Again, I am not going to be here telling you what I think is best. You know, you do what's best. But let me tell you, once you do that, you're going to find out that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very, very important. Let's go back to sharing again. I want to share with you back to the workout that we were talking about. Okay. So, so I come in here and I start. So you notice that on the times, so let's go back to the top. So we discussed the cycle, always number your workouts, because like I said, um, I have right here next, you know, not, not next to me, but in my office, I have probably around 300 coaching, you know, books that I've written and I can go back and I'm up into workout 3000, something like this, but it's easy because you can always recall to that level. Um, level, of course, that's when you, you're going to do this because you know, on the level you say, are you coaching age group? Are you coaching high school? You know, are you coaching college? Are you coaching club, but at a high level, are you coaching club? It's beginner. All right. Gender workouts for men and women are different. So we have to make sure that we cover all our bases. Okay. So then if you go back over here where it says times, you notice I go all the way to Saturday and Sunday's a rest day. Uh, and of course, you know, sometimes in, when I was coaching professionally in Italy, Sunday was not a, a rest day because sometimes we played in the morning. So then maybe you give you a Monday the rest day. It doesn't matter. As long as you work out uh, six days a week. My favorite formula uh, that I've always used will never change is I work uh, two workouts on Monday, two workouts on Tuesday. I work out morning only on Wednesday, give Wednesday afternoon only homework, recovery, and mental workout. Thursday, hard workout Monday um, morning and night. Friday, workout morning and night. And then Saturday, one workout or one game or whatever, depending on what you have. You know, you can also have your game there. But if you go back over here to times, you know, 20 minutes, that should be always. And you concentrate on dry land, torso, and core. When you do your dry land, it's not just sitting over there grabbing your arm, as they usually like to do, and just move the arm back one way. No. It's a full dry land of legs and hips and torso and core when they are doing burpees and they are doing sit-ups and they are doing – uh, you know, uh, shoulder uh, stabilization exercises. And all of these, of course, you know, you have them in the, in the app, but, you know, we, we have thousands of these things and they have them all over the place and they're good. Uh, then you go 30 to 45 minutes. The reason if you look at the times and you're going to look on all of them, when I have time, I give a 20, a 40, and a 60. And the reason for that is because sometimes during the season, that part might be 20 minutes, sometimes it might be 40, sometimes it might be 60. At the same time, you can also do that when you are dealing with the age groups. So, you know, in, in, let's say in a little age group, uh, you might swim 20 minutes. And then as you get to a, to a high school, you might go 40. and you get to college, you might go 60. Okay? I can never see you swimming more than 60 minutes. I mean, I, that would be impossible um, for, sw for water polo guys. <laughs> Okay, so the way I break it down, and we'll stop every time and talk about it, but the way I broke it down over here on the minutes, if you look at it, there's a specific warm-up, and it can go anywhere between three to 500. Uh, the player should be already warmed up, um, but, you know, about three to 500 is fine. A conditioning swim, that's usually like a comprehensive set, uh, you know, something like uh, 650s, uh, you know, backstroke, forward, freestyle, back, or you might go like 675s with progressive, you know, like uh, 70, 80, 90%, something like that to get them ready, uh, you know, for the conditioning swim. That's a specific warm up. And then conditioning swims, again, those are the ones that we want to work on our base. So those are the ones that we go, you know, of course, everybody, oh, 2200, 2100s, you know. Notice I have a conditioning swim one, a conditioning swim two. It depends what you're trying to get accomplished on that part. Um, some aerobic, some anaerobic. I am more towards the anaerobic type sets. 
uh, the sport is played at, a, at the least 90 percentile. You don't have a lot of downtime in a water polo game. So, you know what? It's not like swimming that you swim the event and then have 15, 20 minutes before the next event. The main set to me is a very key. Main set to me, I've broken down usually by position. I group my centers, my defenders, my drivers, and they do their main set separately. Their main set, usually I have a time to be made. Uh, the conditioning swims is just a question of swimming whatever the percentage you like. But when you get into the main sets, um, you want to make sure that that's the time you say, okay, I want you to, even if it's as basic as 850s, and I want you to hold 26 on every one of them on 45 seconds. They need to understand what it is to work at a certain pace. And you notice I put legs horizontal and legs vertical because that is part of conditioning. Remember, water polo is conditioning. We're not swimming only. So in a lot of the conditioning swims, I will increase and maybe start the sprint with a leg work and the sprint with a leg work have the leg work somewhere in the middle. These things are very important. And again, when you are designing these workouts, and I'm gonna give you, a, uh, I'm gonna show you next, that's why I, I, I stopped to share. When you're designing these workouts, you gotta make sure you're getting the whole body of the workout. So you're not just working out, oh, no, today we're gonna do, a, we're gonna swim 6,000 yards, okay? But you have to tell me then, as a coach, as I usually do when I mentor coaches, I say, okay, you're swimming 6,000. Okay, fine. I mean, I'm not going to argue. Why would you argue? I mean, everybody here has their background or whatever. I, but I usually say, say, but why are you swimming 6,000? I, I want you to tell me why. Don't just say, well, you know, we're building base. Okay. What the hell does that mean? I'm sorry, but what does that mean? But if you say, well, you know, what are we doing right now? We're really working, let's say, you know, the beginning of the counterattack. So I want them to have a lot of, you know, leg strength to really take off on the counter and then hold that position, and then we're going to go a base of six counters. Well, a base of six counters is 30 meters. If you're a man, women, 25. Well, six counters on the women is 150 meters. Six counters on the men is 180 meters. So you basically, maybe on the men's side, you're working 200s. On the women's side, maybe you're working 150s. Okay, that's why I understand that. I understand that instead of a flip turn, maybe you do open turns and push off the wall, as you would do it in the game. So you, you got to tell me why you're doing something. Don't just say, we're doing this. You know, because it becomes such a pattern, guys. Think about it. Oh, we're doing legs today. Here, get a heavy ball. We're going to do hold the ball for three minutes. But what legs are you working? Are you working spider legs? Are you working, you know, egg beater? Are you working donkey kick? Are you working scissors? Are you working vertical breast? I mean, what are you working? There are seven different legs out there. Which one are you working? And if you don't write it, that's what's going to happen. Let's take a look at some of the workouts so we know what I'm talking about. So, I go back to share here. I wanted you to take a look at this one here. So what I did on this one, and like I said, this is, I can send to you guys. This is what a workout, oh, sorry, I took the goalie one. Sorry, a heck, when a heck wants to look at goalie workouts. Hey, All right, let's see, let's look at this one here. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it to you later. All right, so here's the swimming workout. So like I said, so you, you, you put them by numbers, and you have a warm-up set. you got a main set. you got a recovery. And look at the time. You always have – you know, let's say number one right off the bat. Three 100s breasts, 475s jump, vertical fly, flutter. you got 650s. That's the one I was telling you about. Three times 70%, three times 80%. Okay? So now we're getting for the main set. Main set, 10 100s at 85%. Eight two hundreds at 85%. Eight 100s at 95%. Six 200s at 95% recovery of six free, uh, free breaths. Now, obviously, this is kind of a workout you would use early in the season, right? Um, uh, but you know, it is specific workout. This is a specific workout. I'm working on things, 10, 100. I'm working on the three-man counter, right? So counter to counter to counter. Then I go to the 800, that's the six counter. So, but if you look at it, look at the percentages. At 85, 85, 95, 95 with very little rest. I want them to fail. Understand that. They need to fail on their workout set. You know, I hate when I see this workout that, oh, today was a great workout. Everybody made it. Hmm. That, that's great. I wonder if that would work in college and high school in a classroom when you basically just do something that everybody gets 100%. Why don't you go turn to your principal a bunch of tests when everybody got 100%? 
you have 37 people in your class and 37 of them got 100%. Hmm. I wonder how long you stay as a teacher, right? I mean, why are you treating any different? I mean, when you do a set, you want the, the athletes to say, man, I, I was able to make seven of them, but I couldn't make it the last three. Okay, that's a good conversation. Let's see why. Why? Why you didn't make it? Well, I got, I got really tired, coach, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, maybe I went too hard. Maybe I did too much. So that breaks it down to a four quarters during the game. Maybe you start too hard. Maybe some players need to come off the bench. Maybe some players start better in the middle of the quarter or first the beginning of the quarter. That is the truth. There are some players that don't start the game well. And it happens all over the world. You put them on the bench, you start the game, and then two minutes go in and put them in. But some guys are just thrown like this, and they get in the water, and they get the first ejection right off the bat because they're too nervous. That's normal. I mean, okay, each person is different. So you have to write the workout according to your personnel. When you are doing your swimming, when you are doing your swimming, you want to make sure that your swimming is linear. What does that mean? So, okay, so I'm working on counter, what type of swimming I'm doing. I'm working on front court offense, what kind of swimming I'm doing. I'm working on front court defense, what kind of swimming I'm doing. Now I'm going to go even further. If I'm working on, if I'm working on counter attack, do I swim long distance? No. Everything I'm going to do is going to be 25, at the most 100. Okay. If I'm working on counterattack, what kind of passing drills should I use? Vertical passing drills? No. I should use horizontal passing drills, passing on the moment, counter passing, uh, you know, uh, basically in and out passing, long passing, uh, all, you know, push passing, backhand passing, sweep passing, parallel passing, passing with a partner. I mean, three-way passing, uh, triangle passing, all these things I need to do because I'm working on counter, and that's what I use. And then I come down to shooting. Should I be working on over fake shots from the perimeter from six meters on a counterattack day? No. I'm working on backdoor shotting, tee shots, Michael Jordans. I should be working on screw shots. I should be working on finishing up the counter drills, shots. I should be working on, you know, everything off the water. I should be able to maybe some pop-ups, maybe some, you know, slash drives from the cross pass to a shot. That's what I need to do. That's what I need to do. So you need to have these drills. And then basically think about how easy it is, particularly guys, I guarantee you guys are better than I am in computer crap. You know, basically I have to write everything. You guys can have it all that. And when you're writing your workout, you just go click, 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 click. You can click all your workouts. Your workout's done because you have all your workouts by numbers. You have your passing by numbers. You're shooting by numbers. That's so important. And then, of course, you do. Your swimming is according to the counterattack. Your passing is according to the counterattack. Your shooting is according to the counterattack. Your technique works according to the counterattack, like post-ups, releases, those kind of things on your technique part. And then you finish it up, of course, with your tactics. That's the counterattack. Now, that is a linear written workout. I guarantee that your players will make a lot more sense for your workouts because the players will go like, man, that's good. Because a lot of times you're working a workout and the coach is having you work on two, three, four shooting with over fake. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. It, trust me, the players might not say anything, but they're going to sit over there going like, uh, there's something wrong here. All right, let's go back to something. I'm going to show you one more thing here. We go back to that. So we got the part of conditioning here, so we move on. Now you notice the, all my passing is done on 9, 12, 15, 18, and 21. I usually do my uh, passing drills three minutes at a time because I want intensity. Every pass needs to be done at the highest posture uh, with a lot of vertical work. And uh, so I, I basically, when I want to do the passing, it's intense. You know, I don't want to just throw the ball out there and pass and guys are talking. No, my passing drills are like, I might give them three minutes to warm up, but basically I say, okay, we're now going to work on lock and pass. They got to go up as high as they can, lock, and then make the pass. Or we're working on, let's say, you know, a movement pass. Or we're working on split passing. Or we're working on two, three, fours. Or we're working on cross face. So, again, there's a million types of passes. And the, the time is based on level, but is also based on your time of workout. So it made it a lot, lot easier because when I did this, I basically named my workout a lot of times by this. Because you notice I do it in shooting also. So when I look at my workout, let's say if I was in a, in a championship like the Olympics, when I only have one hour, 
then I can just go ahead and go like this. Okay, we're going uh, nine passing and 12 shooting or nine passing, 15 shooting. So it's, it's easier for you to take your basic, uh, you know, understanding of numbers. So you should do passing for posture vertical. Uh, you know, the posture is always important or the vertical work. The two go together. And then movement passing is extremely important. And then specific game situation passing, like six on five passing, uh, like counterattack passing with a, with a dry, you know, dry counterattack passing. And then what you should do is, again, break it down. Don't just do something one day and never come back to it. So when you do your vertical, let's say here I'm going to do uh, lock and pass, in and out, and um, two, three, four. And then here I'm going to do movement, uh, uh, long passing, and uh, uh, layout passing, or passing to the center. So then what I do is I do what I did here, one, two, three. And then I do this one here, here, here. So you do three of each each week but you're doing it over and over again. And then that's gonna make a huge difference when you see them coming up. Same thing with your shooting. Your shooting, you should always do with defense and without defense workouts should be, most of the shooting should be done with defense. Uh, vertical driving both with off the pass, also vertical passes, also over the head passes. And then of course the center should always do center shooting drills, game situation drills, same thing, six meters, six on five shooting. And then, of course, that goes in here. Uh, and same thing. You do this. If this, and we're going to break it down, as you see down here, if you look on your plate, see, this is a game plan. So this is what I'm going to introduce, what I'm going to do that whole week. And then, look, this day is going to be defensive shooting. So that means the shooting here, all with defense. Okay? All with defense. Uh, the passing is going to be maybe with defense also. Okay? So then I go to counterattack. And then I go to offense. And then I go to review. And then here, a lot of times you have a game like training could be a game. Again, this is used a lot in the international, but you can change it any way it works. Okay. When you're doing team techniques, then team techniques is when we're working on releasing to the center, passing to the center, balancing it out on the drives, uh, those kind of things. But at least three days a week, I got to work my position exercises my heavy ball with bands. I mean, my centers need to work. My defenders need to work. The shooters need to work on their arm speed, release, hand quickness, and all this stuff. Uh, but on the team days, I'm going to work on rotation, balancing, all right? We're going to work on hip swivels and jumps to make sure we can gap and split. So when you're writing a workout, as you can see right now, this is how much fun it is, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be writing some good workouts today because I'm fired up right now. And, and that is, when you start to write these workouts, you can see things fitting in. Because you're going to see the workout after you have a workout done. All right? And um, let's see. I wrote one yesterday for a friend. He asked me to write one because he didn't understand. Let's see if I have it here. Oh, yeah. You know, when it finishes, it looks a lot like that. You know, it looks a lot like that. When everything is finished, all the positions, you know, so you just go ahead, I did this one, you know, so, you know, the workout is there. I have the tactics, you know, I have, you know, put, I put everything for him for 21 days. And I just sent it to him on the map. You know, I love doing this stuff because to me, I can kind of see how the team is going to turn out. You know, and if you execute these practices, then you really know that what is happening out there, guys. It is not just like said, I just had a workout. Because let me tell you something. And I am a full believer of that. And we need to take responsibilities on that as coaches. When is a bad workout, 75% of the times is our fault. We did not write a good workout. We did not explain it right. Because if the athlete didn't get it, it is not the athlete's fault all the time. It isn't. Hey, if he wasn't listening, that's a different situation. But if you sit over there and the kid is looking straight at you, you're explaining to him, and he does it wrong, whose fault is that? What, you're going to think he's stupid? No, that's not correct. Go back and look at the workout. Maybe you're not repeating enough. Maybe you need to change the way. Maybe you need to show it here. Maybe you need some, some people like video workouts. Some people like, you know, whiteboards. Some people like writing. Each one of them learn different. We have, we have all learned that. Come on, that's psychology 101. 
you know, so that's extremely important on that. Let's look at for one more in here I want to share, and then we'll open up for some questions. We've got plenty of time. Like I said, I now put a, you know, plenty of time for you guys. But let's go in here. Because same thing go, uh, even though I'm going to go to a swimming workout, I'm going to jump back here on the, this one here. Okay. Same thing. Write your goalie workouts. Write your goalie workouts. And it's very important when you write your goalie workouts exactly what to do and have the warm-up time. How long is it going to take? Make sure you do that. And like I said before, these things are – I'll make it available for you, no problem. They're just being typed and being put on PDF so then I can send it. But let's go back to here. You know, we talked about it. So now I've worked the, I've worked the shooting. I've worked the passing. I've got my team technique stuff. You know, I did my individual technique stuff. I'm moving on. I got to my tactics anywhere between 30 to 45, 60 minutes. Hey, by the end of the year, it's probably going to go 60 minutes of tactics. You know, who needs to swim when the playoffs only has a week left? You know, maybe you should be working on your tactics at that time. Maybe your 6 on 5 should be all the time. So you notice on the tactics over here, and even though I put down the day, on the side, write down your six tactics, right? You got counterattack, front court offense, front court defense, after go and timeout plays, power plays, five on six, and power plays six on five. Some people like to add counterattack defense, counterattack offense. I like them to teach them together just because it's important for them to understand that one leads to the other. Okay. Uh, so, of course, you know, so there are some days that you're going to work only on the defensive part of it. Or I, I would suggest that you work on the five man defense every day, at least for five, 10 minutes. Uh, just because it's important. Uh, let's go back to here. Before we got to warm down, it's important to make sure that they warm down. And a lot of times, the reason I say this is not because you just, oh, yeah, come on, who cares? No, it isn't. You go watch an Olympic Games and a World Championships, and the athletes, they finish the game. You don't have to tell them. They're going to go warm down. The warm down is not just, you know, mentally and not just physically, but also mentally, okay? just mentally. Um, so and then, of course, do a little stretching. Make sure you prepare for your next one. I believe in mental training every day. Um, so what I do on my mental training is, again, on Monday, you do kind of an individual meeting. Guys, five minutes, 10 minutes. Individual meeting might be like, hey, training was uh, good today. Let's make sure we tomorrow, make sure you get in five minutes before time. Uh, you know, talking, you know, mostly, most mental meetings should be positive. If you want to do the yelling, do it before training. Um, after training, is not the time to be yelling and screaming and wait until you calm down, maybe do that the next day. Um, so it's like, you know, maybe you'll go set for the week. Hey, guys, you know, we got a big game on Saturday this week. It's really important that we do that. Explain before. Let them know why you're working with that. The next day, still on the team meeting, have them visualize a little bit. What I mean by that, it doesn't mean everybody needs to sit down and visualize together, but basically just say, hey, what do you want to get out of it this week? You know, hey, you're going to have to guard Tony Azevedo on that big game. You know, you better visualize what he does. You know, you better think about how, you know, how you're going to have success. Uh, have an individual meeting once in a while by position. Maybe call the centers and say, hey, guys, you know, they have a great defender, so we got to work together and really tire him out. Back to a team meeting with some homework. Hey, how do we do a practice today? Evaluate yourself. Here's some work for the centers. Here's some work on their defender. The defenders, here's some work on their center. And then back to an individual meeting and just go over the homework. Because if they're going to go play and they're going to have, let's just say, evil bitch, guard them, and, they, you, you turn and, say, and you say to the centers, okay, now how are you going to set up against evil bitch? Oh, I'm just going to push them around. Well, you know, obviously that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, you better learn how to set up against Ivovich and pushing him around won't work. And then the same thing is warrior training. I'm a big believer in warrior training. Uh, what that means is basically say, hey, did you do what was necessary for this team to win? You need to ask that question. Don't ask questions like, did you work hard? I was talking to my grandson this morning. You know, he just got 100% in all his testing over the, the video. And what I said to him, I says, you know, that's what happens when you work hard. That's what happens, you know, when you really go out there and do what needs to be done. You read, you did the things that you did, and you knew you had to do it. That's warrior training, okay? And not just to say, well, you did it because I told you. Remember, I made you do this, and I made you do that. Well, there's no 
warrior training that that's just being a little soldier uh in bottom all my workouts because i always share i put down some glossary of terms um i, don't know, I wrote about I don't know, about 20 passing drills down here, some shooting drills, driving drills, and uh, all passing shooting drills can be done with offense and defense. I always like to – I use that a lot. This is Michael Jordan say, never say never, because limits like fears. You know, just remember that. Um, I love this one on the bottom. That was uh, the great football coach from Green Bay Packers. He says winning is a habit, but unfortunately so is losing. So there's a lot of good stuff out there. Try to let your players know that you're not just a blockhead. You're not like somebody that it just basically doesn't think outside of that box. You know, so you need to understand that you understand other things. So being, being a coach, is, it doesn't mean, you know, like I said before, I don't understand it. You know, you have a coach shouldn't be feared. It should be respected. You know, so a coach should be when a player, when, when, the, when, the, player, when the coach says something, the player should listen because he respects his coach. And he's going to respect his coach when he knows that the coach just really gets into their mind. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. I've got a one question on the chat here. I have the wrong slide up. Yeah, I did. I got that. Thanks, John. Uh, and uh, thanks a lot, John. And, uh, you know, so let's say if you have any questions right now, like, okay, so he, here's a sequence of things and I wrote it down. Um, so, like I said, that we with the, everything is going to be up on the app, okay? And then the all these, I, I'm going to put down also a list. I'm going to do. I think I think for the pass, I'm just going to do 25 passes, 25 passing drills, 25 shooting drills. Uh, we're going to do 16 of them in video that would also be available for you. But I'll write them down so at least you have them written down. Uh, I wrote 50 workouts of swimming. Um, I wrote 30 workouts of goalie and uh, passing and shooting. And then the rest of it, uh, you know, everything should be in the app. Um, you know, Maggie is actually coming over, you know, she comes over and then we're going to talk about some of the stuff for the women too. Um, so uh, what would you got some, any, some questions, something that I said it and you didn't understand or you want me to go over it again? We, we still got about eight minutes. So if not, I can talk about something else. <laughs> Rico, I've got a question if I can. Yeah. Um, with the workouts that you're doing, are you going to have them age-based <clears throat> or are you going to have a total workout aimed at a particular level and then possibly say, look, let's maybe do 80% of that or 60% of that, depending on the ages, because obviously under 12s to under 18s can be quite varied in terms of what our expectations would be. Sure. We, we're designing the workouts into four categories. We, we, what we call uh, crawl, and we have done a couple for the kids. I actually put my grandchildren there six years old, but they can hezzy, they can shoot the outside shot already and all that. So, <laughs> you know, so we have some for the crawl age stage. Then we have the walk stage. That's basically your age group anywhere like from 11 to about 13. Uh, then we have the run group. That's basically your high school, college level. I mean, a beginning college, or uh, and then of course the sprint level. That's at the international level. So right now, what we're doing is we're doing the videos of basically the uh, run and sprint. Okay, but with those, we do the recommendation that you can do with the young player. So if I say you do this for 30 seconds with let's just say a high school guy with the age group you might want to do 15 seconds or if you say you do six reps uh let's say we're going to start putting a lot of work out there with a heavy ball i got some great workouts with a heavy ball um we're going to put some workouts with a heavy ball so i'll say with a high school guy maybe you want to use a two kilo but you know if you're doing with a little guy you put just a one kilo and the little little tiny guy maybe just put a regular size ball you know and that also becomes fun in in some ways um, I do it with the kids, but they, but they hold just about anything, you know, so it's fun. And uh, so that's how we're doing it right now. We hope that in the future we will have videos for all categories, uh, but I'm only one. <laughs> so I have to do it a little bit at a time. And of course, right now we don't have, I, I only have the quarantine. So I got to put my grandchildren and Tony. Tony said to me, he says, dad, I'm in the greatest shape ever because you're putting me through these workouts and it's just like, I get back to training. And uh, so, yes, that's how we're doing that. All right. Anybody else? 
Of course, I have many questions, but oh, I sure. don't want to express them now. I just want to thank you for allowing me to be part of this. Oh, this is awesome. Great. Because I should do it on Tuesday, but you cut the mic so fast. <laughs> so I'm using <laughs> I'm using this right now to, to thank you for okay. let thank us you. be part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Rico. Yeah. Of course. Of course, it depends a lot on quality and, and, and besides the fact that the, it's, it's not about the amount, but also on the quality. But on average, I mean, as a guideline, in your teams, according to your experience, what amount of time do you spend a week on shooting and legwork? Okay, so um, actually... Seven, of course, it depends yeah. a lot of, of a lot of stuff. I, I know it's... Okay. it's yeah, it, on... there's a lot of things involved because, like I said, it depends. You know, I, I go, let's say, if I go into my three, four, I, I use a lot of times the three times four, so four-month seasons. So within that four-month season, let's say it will be a percentage. So let's just say if I have five 21 uh, workouts, right, five uh, workout sets of workout, in the beginning, you know, I might swim 35%, right, and I might pass 20% and shoot, you know, 15% and almost do very little tactics. And then by the end of that series, then I'm switching that around. But I would say comprehensive speaking, technique, passing, and shooting will be 50% of my workout, pretty much across the board. Because I believe the legs should be very high on your workout, but I don't believe I'm just sitting there doing legs. You have to put the legs into the drill. So if I put the legs into the passing drill, put the legs into the shooting drill, put the legs into the counterattack drill, put the legs in the swimming drill, I don't have to waste with a guy sitting there holding a ball like this. No, you do it as part of the workout. Right? I mean, you can go ahead and do a slam series where the guy's waiting to get the outside shot. You can go boom, 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 slam series, and then when he gets his turn, he shoots the ball. For high school guys like John, you know, you know that. I mean, you're sitting over there and you've got a, a practice and you got two cages, you only got two goalies, and you got 25 guys out there and then 10 guys shooting at each cage. And how much time are these that wasted? Well, that's the time they should be doing the legwork. That's the time when they should be doing the legwork. So, 50% of that's going to be that because as we know for a fact, you know, we know for a fact, we did this study has been done by the Serbs, by the Australians. I did it with China with the GPS on every player by position and by situation. And I did is I put a GPS with a camera on, you know, they got money with a GPS and a camera on every single player and every single game. And I was able to find out exactly how much time they swim horizontally, how much time they swim horizontal with vertically, how much time they spend vertically, how much, you know, all that. And we know for a fact that you don't swim horizontally more than 14% of any game because the only time you swim horizontally is the counter because a drive is not horizontal because in the drive, you start in a vertical, you take four or five strokes and you get back to the vertical. So that's not horizontal swimming. That's conditioning, but not swimming. So you got 14% of that. And then we know that it's about 21% of it, you're going to do the vertical to horizontal, vertical to horizontal, right? So I'm going to do that part in the conditioning. So altogether, I got like 35 minutes of that. But remember, that 21 minutes, the 21% that I just put in, 14 is straight swimming. But that 21, I'm going to have leg work. I'm going to have release work. I'm going to have technique work. So now I'm at 35%, right? I'm at 35%. We know that we pass at least the 35 to 40 percent of the game is going to be spent on passing, shooting, you know, moving to a shooting position vertically or receiving the ball or whatever. Okay, so now I put that in there. Now, again, you don't do it individually, you built that in into your tactics, your technique. So now I got 35, I got more 40, I got 75 percent, right? What is the rest of the 25 percent? Okay, that's the individual stuff. That's when nobody else is playing with you, you, you. So now is what I say. Are you working your centers? Are you are your centers doing a workout by themselves? Are your defenders doing workout by themselves? What happened to the right-handers that play the left-hander side? Are you having them shoot cross cage? Are you catching cross cage? Are you defending cross cage? Are they putting their left leg up? Because you know what? If they're shooting the ball like they shoot from the American 21 side, it's not going to work. They, the, the body position is different. The leg work is different. The release is different. So are they doing that work? Are they doing that work? 
You'll post up players doing that work. So that's the time that you do all this, and then you're going to finish up with a seven, eight seconds of special plays, you know. But again, then you've got to put in there, you, you have a play after timeout. You should have a variation of at least three, no more than four, but you should have about three, should be fine. Um, you know, your sprint play, play after the goal. I mean, do you come back in a pyramid? Do you come back in a pentagon? Do you come back in a trapeze? I mean, how do you come back after the goal? It's important. You know, you're giving up 10 goals, right? Or you're scoring 10 goals. So you're going to have to defend 10 times right after a goal. Because we all know that one of the killer things is somebody gets scored. You score and they score. You score and they score. Well, that's because you're not preparing. Guys are still celebrating when the other team is scoring the goal. All right, we got a question here. Um, no, 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 and not only that, but understanding on some things that we have to do, unfortunately, you know, we're, we're trying to get better in this world, but we're still a man's world. Uh, but, you know, so I will answer that privately. So send me an email and I'll make sure I answer all that for you, honey. No problem. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, got to get ready for the player once. And first, I, first I got to go give a kiss to my granddaughter and then everything else will just be fine. So, all right, guys. See you next week. I'll put out... Uh, I'll put out all the, 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 oh, by the way, any topic in particular, more that we want, do you want to continue to talk a little bit about uh, designing training or you want to move more into the passing shooting drills or you want to do a combination of both? I think we could still talk a little bit more about training. If that's okay, I would like to do like maybe a phase two of it where we actually break down with some drills on video and then show what that would fit in. Would that be okay with you guys? Absolutely. Video would be great. Yeah. All right, man. Great. Sounds good. What about the rules? Thank you, Rico. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much, Rico. Thanks, Rico. Right, Cheers, man. Yeah.